exactly as you said, you know, this is such a familiar classic period drama land. And, um, you know, there's we've seen so many period dramas over the years of Jane Austen and all that sort of style, but never told from this perspective before. And, um, you know, to have a woman at the centre of it, and not just a woman, but a, a biracial woman, um, and directed by a woman, written by a woman, you know, um, it was really just refreshing to me to be able to explore this love story, as well as having it all grounded by this social, political context of the time, which... Um, to me, really weighted it in a kind of reality and, and made it feel very contemporary. And knowing that you know this, that it's saying something so interesting and unique through a medium and a, a, a way of storytelling that we're very familiar with, mm -hmm. so it's a, it's a much more easier way for audiences to go in and kind of you know, form their own opinion and learn something from mm -hmm. from quite a kind of formulaic way of, of storytelling, mm. which is through the kind of grand period drama, yeah. Downton Abbey-esque kind of And I think of it's just quite arresting to see someone that looks like me at the centre of it, you know, and, and for me, even when I first saw the, the film, even myself, you know, I sort of, you know, we get introduced into this, as I say, such a familiar yeah, like, world. This image is so, um, it's so unique, you know, to see a biracial woman in And not a slave, a corset, not in a, a subservient, yeah. so brutalised yeah. role, yeah. you know, given a, a, you know, a ladylike education and all of that, and, and articulate, you know, I think that that was something that Amma was, you know, keen to see represented, you know, in a, a voice of, of, as I say, you know, a strong and educated and articulate woman of colour on the screen. What did you two both learn about your vaunt, much vaunted, hopefully going away, class structure of England? <laughs> well, I guess, I mean, you know... You especially, Beth. On both ends. Well, you know, growing up in the UK, I guess, you know, class has become sort of such a kind of taboo subject because it really is, you know, the structure of, of the society. And um, I don't know. I mean, for me, I learned from this film, you know, I'm glad that, that the social conditioning is not as... as uh, constrained nowadays as it, as it was. Yeah. Well, still I don't know, I'm, a, I'm Australian, right. and so like, yeah, and I've been living in London for a couple of years, and um, I think that there is a class system in the United Kingdom that is kind of so ingrained that I think if it vanished, there'd be a lot of people in the upper echelons that would mm. kind of equally mm. implode. <laughs> Cause, um, so there's a, there is a, it's a very strange system that kind of is so archaic that you know, we're not even sure, I'm not even sure what purpose it serves exactly. Mm. But, you know, it's great to explore um, the love uh, <laughs> side of the relationship because these two people were so in love and they were, had all these strange, um, you know, barriers in front of them that, had, that served them no, no purpose. No exactly, service. and that whole idea of, you know, being able to break the rules and, and you know, that yeah. society can endow you with all these expectations and labels, but you don't have to accept them. <laughs> no, you, can, you can be who you want to be, yeah. and, and and I think that you know the fact that they did have this, like you say, this romance at that time, kind of going with their instincts, yeah. and um, was sort of inspiring. I mean, yeah. I mean, when John meets Dido, he doesn't think you know, you know, that's a biracial woman, you know, in a fancy dress. He thinks she's a little a snob, essentially, <laughs> so a snooty rich girl. Yeah. Um, and there's nothing to do with the colour of her skin, and it's, they literally meet their meeting of minds, you know, and then progressively they fall in love, obviously. But that's it's nice to be able to play people like that who, have, who don't have that social conditioning and are open to um, kind of meeting people, you know, soul to soul, essentially. Yeah. And I think for Dido, you know, going back to the class thing as well, that, you know, she grew up in such a secluded environment, you know, that she really was just part of the family. And I think that that's really refreshing the way that, you know, we developed the bond with Sarah Gadden as well, you know, and that, that family structure so that when we hit the film where I come in to play the role, it's that coming of age moment where suddenly she's sort of uh, uh, aware of the world at large. And, and, you know, I think that all of us grow up, you know, knowing who we are and then we somehow sort of get it sort of beaten out of us or society sort of, you know, kind of um, shapes us and, um, you know, it was great to kind of see that transition um, for, for the character and in, 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 in the time as well. What were the characteristics about Belle that you can most relate to in your life? Um, I suppose that, you know, she's 
feisty and uh, <laughs> determined. And, um, you know, for me, I, I guess, you know, I also grew up in the countryside-ish, you know, in a, in a, a small town. So I can what relate. Town? Uh, Whitney in Oxfordshire. Um, so I can relate to kind of that sort of... Um, protected upbringing you know and uh, yeah I guess her determination is kind of what I I relate to most as a characteristic because um, for me you know I knew about this project for almost seven years before it came into fruition so you know um, to be able to kind of hold something in the back of your mind like that and, and hope that it's going to one day work out you know with with and for you um, you know and, and I think just in this industry as well you know you have to have quite a strong sense of self uh, because people will endow you with with um, you know roles and types and all of that stuff so um, yeah there's a lot that I can relate to and I were don't. you always attached to the project for those seven years and, and I wouldn't just... say attached I think I mentally attached myself I wasn't officially <laughs> attached uh, I think I attached my heart to it um, how did you first hear about it uh, I think um, uh, well, I met the producer when I just left drama school, and I had a two-line part. I don't know if I told you this. I had a two-line part in a film that you did. Yeah, in a film that you did. I had a two-line part in a film that Damien Jones was producing, and he told me about this painting. And had I heard of Dido, I was like, no, it's called Straight Heads. Um, and uh, and then you know I, at that stage there was no script it was just you know an idea and I think he, he was working on you know I, the idea of making a, it into a film and then years later I, you know I, I met Amma Asante for a completely different project as well and then um, you know uh, uh, Damien did The Iron Lady and that sort of meant that Belle kind of could happen you know with a bit more momentum um, so yeah I guess that, that, that journey has been you know are you two to an item? You're looking at her. <laughs> right? It's looking kind of like, right? The next matchmaker. Right? The matchmaker's in the movie. It's the question. Oh, uh, it's in the movie. Yeah, we told you that maybe it would um, ruin your idea for the film, so no. just keep it to you. No, it'd be kind of more fun <laughs> if you Can were. Can you talk to us about the, course, the, the, the costumes that you had to wear? And how did you feel having to strap up? Every night or however. Yeah, the, the corsets definitely took a lot of getting used to. I I usually felt kind of um, very sort of oh, no, uh, poised, I suppose, and and you know it took it took about twenty minutes once they were on to kind of get used to breathing normally. Um, but you know they gave me so much in terms of physicality and in terms of grace and posture. I start sitting up straight now just talking about them because. You know, they really, you can't even bend over at the waist, you can't do your shoelaces, you, you can't really walk upstairs, you know, without getting out of breath. So suddenly you become this sort of delicate flower, you know, <laughs> on a physical level, um, which, which was kind of interesting for me. Um, and, you know, they give you so much in terms of knowing what it, on, you know, as a woman, what it felt like to be in society at that time, you know, and constrained and restricted. And, um, you know, there's some theory that, you know, that, 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 um, you know, with your lungs compressed like that, you don't get as much oxygen to your brain, mm. therefore women can't think as clearly. And, 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 you know, and, and I, don't, I don't know if that's true, but it was the idea that, you know, women are in that time very much in a, not in a position of power and freedom. And for me, that was, um, you know, I loved the scenes that I had in my knife gown. <laughs> me and Sarah Gavin, you know, we had those few sister se sisterhood scenes, you know, in our nightgowns, and we would just, like, lie there and just kind of, you know, feel so free. And, 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 and that was kind of nice to have that contrast between the outside world and these lit young girls, basically, that were kind of trying to be women. And then when you see them and just they're there in their little nighties and, and, you know, so free and, and childlike. Um, so it was also filming. You're not meant to wear a corset for that long, I mean, because you're yeah. filming a corset in you know, a ten-hour day. Yeah, exactly. Whereas women at the time would have come out for like two hours in the middle of the day and paraded around and yeah, then gone back got... to their room and taken it off. Exactly. So I did used to like that. dance around my trailer at the end of the day yeah. when I had it taken off. I'd like Proper put on some steps. music yeah. and just <laughs> sort of <laughs> stretch out. Um, yeah. Their yeah. armor was very, very impressive as a director. I mean, she was in here, and I mean, we were just 
taken aback by her elegance. Yeah. How how did you feel about her as a director? Each of you, can you answer that? Mm-hmm. Man, Emma, I when I first met, her, I was completely blown away by how intelligent she was and how specific she is as a director. So you know, you're working on a scene and. You know, she walks in and she knows exactly what she wants. It's quite intimidating as an actor because you, know, you, you feel like for a second that there's no room. But what she's actually doing is she's constructed the entire scenario in her head and she knows exactly how it's going and you feel so safe in that environment because we know what our parameters are, we know where the character is, we know what, where the story is supposed to go and she executes it. And then when you actually see the film, you realise that she has done everything that she planned. I mean, it's, it's, it's quite a rare thing that you see with the director. Yeah, I totally agree with that. I've worked on things before where, you know, you have that three different versions. You have this, this, the script that you read, the film that you shoot, and then the final edit of the film. And sometimes they can be completely different things. And yeah. for me, what was so testament to Amma's determination and vision and single-mindedness um, about the story was that when I saw the film, it was everything that we talked about and more, but it, I recognised it. There were no nasty surprises, I mean, apart from like, the shock of, sort of seeing yourself, which is always a bit weird. But you know, th- that she'd really captured every nuance, and that, and that was the thing that was you know, so wonderful to work with, with her, is that she wanted, was detailed, and she wanted to capture those moments, those thoughts, and to you know, create the characters vibrant inner life so that we can relate to them on a human level and we're not just looking at sort of archetypes. And Emma kept, one of the most amazing things about Emma is she was so open about her own personal experience. So she was constantly through the filming Mm. process coming up and relate, giving her own life, her own story, her own experiences. Can you tell us some of the things that she shared? Just about the, the, like, you know, things about her own marriage with her husband and how, you know, what he said to her when they fell in love and Amazing, very personal, very personal moments in her life. Yeah, that and her father-daughter r- dynamic, yeah. which definitely informed, you know, uh, Dido and and um, Lord Mansfield's dynamic. And I think the thing that she invested in us all was a huge sense of heart, mm. because we were so aware that we were dealing with these weighty issues, potentially worthy, earnest subjects that that you know you don't want to get. You know, as much as they are very important, you don't want to feel like you're bashing the audience over the head with, mm. you know, politics and 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 so to be able to kind of do that with a lightness of touch and a sense of heart and um, romance. I mean, she's a very romantic person, and and so, you know, um, and and femininity. You know, I think that's really something that she really brought out of this film. It is a very feminine film. Not that it's not for men. It's you know, but it's but it's just you don't often see something so unabashedly feminine and romantic. This film is bringing a lot of attention on the both of you, and you have Railway Man as well. Uh, How is that changing your lives? And other than with we wanting to report on your secret romance, <laughs> um, uh, how does this change things for you guys? I mean, you know, it's it's a lot more press, a lot more sort of you know thinking about clothes and, and getting on planes and all of that sort of thing. But, you know, I mean, really, it's, it's great to be able to share the scale of, of, of this. And this started off as an independent film, and now we have this, you know, international distribution. So, um, and things like this. I mean, this is kind of crazy yeah. to have your face on a book. That's what I mean. <laughs> this is the first time I saw so this So you're the face of, of, of the uh, period now. Yeah, poster <laughs> girl. But we can't figure out who the writer is. It's so Apparently she's she's from she's a historian Oxford as well. Did you see that? She's so, so what other ways has it changed your lives? The, this uh, kind of a movie and and the, such a powerful romantic uh, message that we want to know about such things. So mm-hmm. tell me. I mean, I feel like for me, you know, time will tell. You know, the film comes out next week. You know, I, I think like you were saying, you know, we work on these things, you know, in seclusion, and then you know, however long, you know, a year later they come out, and so. Um, I don't know. You might have to ask me in six and, months. And you too. Suddenly, two movies in a year. And well, I've got five movies. Five movies over now in September. Oh wow! I just know. Yeah. So it's, it's, I mean, it's one of those things That's where I left that. drama school in 2010, and then I've just been working nonstop. I just finished my eighth feature film in January. Oh wow! A lot of actors are going to hate you. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those things where it's like you're just working and working and working, and then all of a sudden you have uh, you're living on an airplane. And you know, like I'm not quite sure where I live anymore. I grew up in Australia. I'm it's living definitely up in Los a Angeles, nomadic London, life. Yeah, you know, yeah, it's very nomadic. And you, like Google was saying, we were talking about this yesterday. It's just you just take every day as it comes, and 
is the really fun. The schedule's always changing. The schedule's always changing, <laughs> and luckily we don't have to like look after the schedule. So <laughs> and okay. that, and, you know, like you just kind of have a good time. And, I mean, I feel very fortunate that, that that this that I get to do what I love as a profession. Mm-hmm. You know, so. And you've built up a symbol in many ways. A symbol. <laughs> what would this movie? Like, oh yeah, I guess. I mean, it's a responsibility, but hopefully, you know. Um, We'll see. I, I sort of think, you know, I want to be able to inspire people, you know, and so if that's if that's possible. I don't know, a symbol sounds really kind of heavy. <laughs> good, as an actress, you know, obviously I've, I've seen some of the TV stuff you've done, you've done normal, which is good. Uh, but when you read the script and you're on 80% of the pages, how much sight does that do for you or pressure? You know, you're only your center of attention. And so like, yes, finally. <laughs> <laughs> um, no. <laughs> now we see what it does. <laughs> no. Um, I mean, you know, for me, I loved the story so much. So, and I usually. It's just my nature to kind of turn any nerves or, or you know, into adrenaline and, and anticipation. And I was just so excited to tell this story that, you know, you sort of take the pressure off yourself. You go in for the character and you, you, you know, that's the way to get out of any of that anxiety, I think, is just to to take on the responsibility and just get going with it. So, you know, the schedule was full on, but, you know, I, um, I felt prepared because we'd done some rehearsals and I'd known about the story for a long time and read and reread and read, read the script. So, um, so for me, it's just like, yeah, <laughs> let's do this. Now you have Blackbird coming up, directed yes. by another Black female director. Yes. What's that going to be like? Uh, completely different. I mean, get ready because it's it's really it could not be more different to Bell, and I'm really glad to have them. You know, as as, as uh, coming out in the same year because they're so contrasting. Um, it's very contemporary. I play a pop star kind of who uh, at the beginning of the film basically um, wins a, a Grammy award and then tries to throw herself off her hotel balcony. <laughs> So um, it's sort of dealing with the psychological implications of fame and, and the toxic nature of the in- music industry and how that can be exploitative for young women and when they're packaged from a very young age. So it was all issues that I thought were really worth exploring and very contemporary. Um, you know, and I'm I, I, um, um, like Belle with the sort of father-daughter dynamic, I have a mother-daughter dynamic with the momager. Um, character played by Minnie Driver in that so and like Belle as well I mean even though it's completely different uh, setting it definitely explores the issues of identity Um, you know this girl is very much you know had her identity in the industry shaped for her and and she is able to break free during the course of the film and sort of find her authentic self Um, so it's definitely a theme that seems to be running through through my work you know, in, in Belle, uh, Alma made us fall in love with your love. <laughs> the only thing missing was the white horse coming in. You know. <laughs> do, you, do, you, do you picture yourself, how do you picture falling in love? Wow, I mean there's so many different types of love and I think that, you know, um, this is a very, very romantic sort of historic sweeping version of it. Um, I don't know. I think there's there's many types of and different stages of love. So I don't know. I think that's such a big question. She wants to know about you. We don't want the boys to be left alone. Come on, we want to hear about you, Paul. Like that, you romantic. Thank you. Here's my side. The boys side. Go ahead. How do I imagine falling in love or in relation to the story of the film? You know, I think look what what is really great about this love story is that the two characters fall in love and through falling in love they find themselves they're not comfortable with their situation they're, they're, there's something amiss in their lives and they find each other mm. and then they realise that that's the missing piece and their kind of um, personalities become whole and so I guess it's that thing of young love is finding that within yourself um, so I think people can obviously identify with that um, and um, I'm sure we've all had a similar experience at some stage in our life. Before you 